So if you followed my channel for a while now, you'll probably know that I really, really love stories. Some of the stories that we've looked at in Call of Duty include the specialist characters, whether that be Spectre or Battery or whoever. And then further from there, we went to bigger characters like Frank Woods or Alex Mason, and I love these stories. But one thing we've done this year that I've never done before is dive into the stories of the maps, looking at various things hidden throughout them and Easter eggs, and deciphering this story, this trail of breadcrumbs, if you will, that the developers have left for us. Now, one thing that I've done in the past is dive into Nuketown and looked at various Easter eggs throughout the different games, and those are pretty interesting. But as soon as Nuketown was released in Black Ops 4, I thought it was interesting because this map was unlike any other Nuketown we've ever seen before. And as it turns out, the backstory of this actually matches as well. The backstory in Black Ops 4's Nuketown is very, very different than any of the Nuketowns before. And to fully understand it, we actually have to dive in going all the way back to Black Ops 1 to look at that story to decipher what Black Ops 4's Nuketown is all about. So without further ado, I give you the secret backstory of Black Ops 4's Nuketown. So the story of Nuketown begins in Black Ops 1, and in Black Ops 1, this little town was designed as a nuclear testing facility. In other words, a facility where they would shoot nukes at and see how things would react, various buildings, vehicles, that kind of thing. And what you may not know is that this map was actually designed after a scene in an Indiana Jones movie, where Harrison Ford stumbles along in the desert into an actual nuclear testing site, where he eventually winds up hiding in the refrigerator to survive a nuclear blast. And once you compare this scene with the original Nuketown, you can absolutely see the similarities. And then to further amplify the idea that this is a nuclear testing site, whenever a game ended in Black Ops 1, you could see a nuke go off and the little town get destroyed. Now moving forward to Black Ops 2, which takes place in 2025, the town kind of is now designed after a 1960s vibe, but is set in the future. It's kind of a weird mix between the two, kind of a retro futuristic vibe. Now, it's never made clear whether or not the location of this town is the same as the nuke town in Black Ops 1 or not. But once again, as we find out at the end of every game, it is once again a nuclear testing facility as we can see the nuke go off at the very end. Now where things get interesting is in Nuketown in Black Ops 3 or Nuke 3 Town or Nuketown 2065, whatever you want to call it. This one takes place in the year 2065 and the reason why this one's different is because if you have a look around, you are no longer in a desert. It appears as though almost if you're in a floating island. But as we find out through the lore of Black Ops 3, the reason for this is because all of the Black Ops 3 multiplayer maps actually take place in a simulation. Now in this simulation, the maps seemingly take place after real world situations that the soldiers known as specialists could actually get into, taking the idea of Nuketown from previous games and putting it into the simulation with a futuristic vibe. And even at the end of the game, when the nuke goes off, it doesn't appear as though a nuke is going off, but rather the simulation is actually unraveling, which would also kind of coincide with the events of Black Ops 3 single player as well. But still, even to this point, even though it's in a simulation, it's still designed after a nuclear testing facility, as if a nuke is soon going to go off in this situation. Now where things really get turned upside down is in Black Ops 4, because I'm going to say a very simple statement here that for some reason a lot of people haven't put together, even though it's completely obvious. Nuketown in Black Ops 4 is not a nuclear testing facility. What? Nukes do not go off at the end of the game here. But rather, if you watch the end cutscene at the end of a game, a nuke is actually launched. This map is designed to look like a nuclear testing facility, but really it's a Russian launch facility during the Cold War. Now looking around the map, there's plenty of evidence to support this. All the vehicles look like they're from the late 60s. On top of that, there is Russian writing literally all over the entire map with lots of chalkboards hinting towards a nuclear launch device. On top of that, maps showing possible nuke launch locations. And on top of that, there's even a little bit of an Easter egg relating to the Russian heritage of this map. And that would be the mailboxes. So in previous Call of Duty games, this was also an Easter egg. So in Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2, the mailboxes were actually very similar in which both of them had the same 
name written on them, Mason and Woods, which is, of course, two of the main characters from those campaigns. Now, this changed in Black Ops 3, and the characters on the mailbox were Hendrix and Corvus, which were essentially the two bad characters in Black Ops 3. Now, once again, going forward to Black Ops 4, this Easter egg has once again changed, and since the map takes place in Chernobyl, which is in the Ukraine, which is, of course, right around the corner from Russia, the two main characters are are Reznov and Patrinko, which are two of the Russian characters from previous Black Ops games. Now, one of the biggest mysteries with this map is the Rotary Phone Room, literally a room in one of the buildings that is just filled with phones. And since this map was launched, everyone was looking for an Easter egg, but I don't think there's an Easter egg here, but rather it actually kind of explains a little bit of the backstory of the map. You see, at the time that this map would have came out in the late 60s, the way that telephones work and the way that they kind of still work is with telephone switches. In other words, you would call a phone number and that call would go to a central location, which a telephone switcher would then put your phone call through the switch and send you to whoever you want to call. The problem with this during the Cold War is these were essentially easily hacked or listened into. So if you were working in a secret facility like a nuclear launch facility and didn't want any spies, CIA agents hacking into what's going on, they would kind of run their own telephone switch by using all of these different rotary phones. A call would come in and then go out a separate phone, keeping it all in one location. Secretive like a spy. Now another mystery on this map is the slideshow. In the other building, there is a slideshow that continuously goes throughout a game, and it shows you several different images of previous Call of Duty maps. So the first one we're looking at here is the original Nuketown sign from the original Black Ops 1 map. That one's pretty self-explanatory. The next slide is an image of the original Nuketown map. The way you can tell is the nuke countdown timer is off in the distance on that tower in the picture. The next slide, this map you are looking at here is Yemen from Black Ops 2. After this, we have WMD from Black Ops 1, followed up by Launch from Black Ops 1. Then we have this map here. It's definitely the hardest to see out of all of them, but I believe it is Slums from Black Ops 2, and as we know, it is also in Black Ops 4. This next one here is an interesting one. It's actually a bird's eye view of the original Nuketown map from Black Ops 1. And then finally, the last image we have is of this deer. Now, this is the only image that is an, of a previous Call of Duty map, but what I can tell you is that this deer is actually on this Nuketown map across the other side, just outside of the boundaries. Now, there are two really interesting points to this slideshow. First of all, looking back on this since I originally made the video about the Easter eggs on this map, I just noticed that WMD was added into the game after this slideshow came out in Nuketown. So I'm betting that possibly we get both Yemen and Launch as future DLC maps in Black Ops 4. I mean, only time will tell, but I am putting in my prediction right now that Launch or Yemen is going to be in the next DLC. Mark my word, write this down, because I really think this prediction's right. Now, the other weird thing about this is most of the maps in this slideshow fit with the Cold War era. WMD, Launch, Nuketown, they all fit in that kind of time zone. However, Yemen does not. Yemen takes place in the future. And that brings us to the fact and the question as how are future specialist characters in the year 2045 playing in a Call of Duty map that takes place between 1960 and 1975? It doesn't make any sense, unless this map takes place in the simulation. And that is where the story of this map comes in. You see, at the launch of Black Ops 4, they kind of announced in a very subtle way that this multiplayer was not going to take place in the simulation. And at launch, if you look at all of the maps, they fit with the storyline of Black Ops 4 and the specialist characters. Arsenal being the Deisler robotics facility on top of that frequency being the listening outpost. All of these maps fit into the Black Ops 4 universe. But as soon as Nuketown came out in December, the map started to go off the wall, and it turns out that that is the point where the specialist characters started to operate within the simulation. This is actually supported by Torx comic, where you see him getting out of the simulation, and this was actually released before Black Ops 4 came out. And as you can see from the various DLCs that have released since then, the maps have gone more and more off the wall since the release of Nuketown. This would also explain why in the Easter egg of Nuketown, when you shoot off all of the zombies' heads, sorry, the mannequins' heads, 
All of a sudden, the nuke goes off, puts an explosion in the air, and the mannequins start dropping from the sky, something that would only be possible within the simulation. But ladies and gentlemen, that is the secret backstory of Nuketown in Black Ops 4. What better place to hide a nuclear launch facility than a place that people think nukes are going to be tested? I think it's a brilliant idea and a brilliant twist on the Nuketown map. And as always, if you enjoyed it, I'd love it if you could hit that like button. Also, let me know what you think of the Nuketown story down in the comments below. And if you're new to the channel and like what you see, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you have notifications on. And until next time, guys, peace out. We are, we are reaching for the stars, but we're making this too hard.